Hello everybody and welcome back to another CB Show Tunes tutorial. Now today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be covering our camera script. Now this is going to be a base script and you can modify it to make it better but this will give you the general idea on how to be able to create a camera that is able to rotate around your character, allows you to zoom, as well as allowing you to be able to have your camera lock whenever you're moving. Uh, so basically if I'm moving right here, your character is going to be rotating with uh, your camera. But if I stop moving, then we can rotate around our character. Uh, so that's super, super cool. Uh, we also have a little bit of collision with objects. Now this is not a complete uh, collision course and all because uh, basically Say, for instance, if we come over here and hit this, it's going to have a couple of issues. So just keep that in mind whenever you're setting up this script. Okay, uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Now, inside our previous tutorial, uh, you would have something like this. So you would have your player uh, component set up. Uh, you would also have your gr graphics, um, empty game object. And, of course, you'd have your camera uh, center point. Now I call this camera bull. Uh, underneath this, you're going to drop your main camera. Make sure that your main camera is tagged as main camera. And this right here is another camera that I set up. It was just for UI visuals only. Uh, you can put that there if you want to, uh, but you don't really necessarily have to have that. Okay, so we're going to focus on the main camera for now. Uh, so the first thing that you want to do inside the main camera, uh, you want to be able to set some of these uh, objectives up. So the clipping planes we want to set to about a point 0.1 on the near. The far is pretty good. We can leave that the way it is. And you can roll down, check out some of the other settings and see if you want to use them. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to add this camera control script. Now this will be inside the comment section below so just keep that in mind. Um, but like I said you may need to modify it for your particular purpose. Now we're going to open this up in Visual Studios and we're going to try to cover this as fast as possible. There is a lot of data inside here, so just keep that in mind. So I created a region, uh, you know, for organization purposes. And inside this region, we're going to have a public transform called target. Now, this is self-explanatory. Our target is going to be what we're looking at. Now, automatically, you would think that we're going to be targeting our player because that's who our target initially is. Well, we're actually going to be targeting our camera bull and if you had been following along inside our previous tutorial you would have put this at the head of your character and what this does it allows our camera to focus on the head instead of focusing on the feet of our character uh, the next thing that we want to do we have a, a header called base settings and we have a public float called sensitivity now I like putting my sensitivity at about two uh, you can set this up at higher values or lower values it's uh, really up to you we also have a public vector 2 called look min max and personally I like setting this at a vector or vector 2 of uh, negative 30 and 30. Now that's just a personal preference but you can set it to whatever you want it to be. Uh, we also have a header called positioning and this is going to be our offset value so basically where a camera is going to be residing or uh, where a camera is going to stop uh, around our player. Uh, we also have a public float called transition time. This is going to be used as the movement from point A to point B to get to this offset position. You also have our fill to view. Now this allows us to be able to change whenever we select the uh, right click button. So we have our public float called normal view angle. This is going to be set at 70, our aim view angle at 30, and a aim adjustment time. And this is how fast we aim. So whenever we right click and all, it's going to zoom in at this speed. And of course, you can change that to whatever you want it to be. Uh, we also have wall collision. So this is going to be your minimum distance to a wall. Um, preferably, I would set this at zero. Uh, that's up to you and your maximum distance uh, to the wall. You'd also have a public float called smooth and this is of course how uh, smooth it's going to run up against that wall. Uh, I preferably would have this at a point one, uh, so we'll put that there. Uh, we have a vector three called dolly dirt. Uh, this is just going to be our current vector position and we also have a private float for z distance and x distance. I might 
not actually use these things. I will just have to double check that. Uh, we have a header called overrides, and this is our override camera. So this locks our camera and disables it as essentially. Uh, and lastly, we have our private float. So we have mouse X, mouse Y, look, turn, final X, and final Y. Now, these are going to control how we look. So if we have a controller, if we have a mouse, it allows us to turn. And that reminds me also, so we're going to go over to our edit inside of our um, game engine. And we're going to go to project settings, go to input. You will need to add these uh, to work with this script. Otherwise, it's not going to run well. And you're going to add these four um, inputs. So you're going to have look, which you're going to set as gravity of zero, dead as zero, and a 0.1 on the sensitivity. You're going to change the type to joystick axis, and you're going to change the axis to third axis. You're going to have a turn input, and this is going to have another axis. We don't need those right there. So you're going to set it to same gravity, same dead, same sensitivity, and the type of joystick axis, and this will be your sixth axis. Now, one thing that you could do, um, oh, well, I'm not going to go over there. Uh, one thing that you could do is basically go over to PS4 um, input settings for Unity, and it will automatically show you uh, the axis. And just go over to pictures, of course, and find that out. We also have aim, so this is going to be our right click. So with the positive button, it's going to be mouse one, and our joystick positive button is going to be button six or L2. Now you're going to leave everything else the same, so you're going to make sure that it is a key or mouse button, and you're going to set it at a thousand point zero zero one thousand. And of course, lastly, you can have interact button or input, and this is just going to be your E button and your joystick button zero which is your square button so cool that's all you really need for that all right so we're going to close our variables and we're going to open up on game start so this is basically what's going to happen at the beginning of the, the uh, script so whenever the game starts this right here is going to start so we're going to have our dolly dirt it's going to equal to our transform dot local position we're going to make sure that it's normalized so we're always going to be facing on a global axis. Our z distance is equal to our transform.local position dot magnitude. So uh, basically the length or the float value. And our max distance is equal to our offset value of z. So cool. On our updates, we have two different updates. We have a void update and a late update. So underneath the void update, we're going to be checking our collision. Now, normally you would have this under our late update, and preferably that's where you want to put it. I put it here just because it works better in my opinion. Um, but yeah, if you want to put it underneath the late update, you can. Underneath the late update, we have our input settings, our rotations, and our other inputs. And lastly, we have our completed functions. So these are going to be a lot of functions that make this script work. So we have our input settings. This covers our look script. So we have our mouse x, mouse what, our mouse x, yeah. Mouse x minus equals input duck at axis mouse y. We're going to get our clamp value. So we're going to make sure that it is locked to our minimum look and our maximum look. That's why we used a vector 2 earlier. That way we wouldn't have to write two different floats. Uh, we also have our look. We say it's minus equals to our input ducket axis look. And as you can see, we have that set up as well. Okay, um, so basically with our looks, we're going to be combining these at the bottom. So if you take a look at our final x, it's equal to our mouse x plus look. So we just combine both of these. Then we multiplied them by sensitivity. You could multiply this by time dot delta time. It's just not necessary because it really, really can mess you up because you gotta do like a hundred sensitivity, hundred twenty sensitivity, and it's just too much in my opinion. Uh, we also have our turn. This is uh, just a basic mouse y plus equals, and basically our input of mouse x turn is plus equal to input got it get axis our value of turn. Then we're going to just add those values to final y, which is equal to that value. So we'll close that. 
Next, we have our void called rotation. And inside here, we're just going to be using those values in the input settings. So we're going to create a quaternion called new rotation. And our quaternion is equal to final x and final y, which is, of course, 0 on the z. Then we're going to call our player rotation. So we're going to say quaternion player rotation is equal to quaternion.euler. We're going to grab our final y. So down here, we're going to now check and see if we're going to be moving or not. So we're going to basically say we're going to grab our horizontal axis and we're going to check are we moving or not. We're going to have a vertical axis. We're going to say check are we moving. And of course, we're going to be checking if we're aiming. Uh, so if any one of these are active, we're going to start. Uh, we're going to actually rotate our parent. So. We're going to say target.parent, so we're going to grab our camera bull, and then we're going to find the parent, so that's our player. Then we're going to grab its transform, then we're going to set its rotation, and then we're going to basically create a slurp function. So we're going to say quaternion and slurp, we're going to grab our parent object, so our player. We're going to grab its transform, we're going to ma make sure we have its rotation selected. Then we're going to change its rotation to our player rope. So as you can see, our player rotate is equal to rotating on the y-axis only. Then we're going to set the speed at transition time, so how fast we rotate to it. And of course, our target dot rotation, that's going to be our camera's bull. And we're going to make it equal to our new rotation. So that would be the look and the turn script. Lastly, we're going to set up our movement. So we're going to say transform.position. So our camera position is equal to a vector 3 of lerp. We're going to grab our current position. And then we're going to change it to our target position. So target transform.position minus our new rotation multiplied by our offset value. And then, of course, with a transition time of transition time. So let's close that down. Next, we have our other inputs. This is just going to control when we aim what happens. So we're going to say if input dot get button aim. We're going to grab our camera uh, component. Then we're going to check out its field of view, and we're going to lerp the value just like before. But we're going to change the field of view instead. So we're going to say aim view angle to aim adjustment time. So basically, our current field of view to our new aim view. And of course, how fast that transition happens. And of course, we're also going to be setting our time dot time scale is equal to 0 0.7. Now, you could set this to 1 if you want, and it's not going to change a thing. I just noticed that whenever you're zooming in, it's better to slow down time because if you don't, it just is very difficult to, difficult to control. Uh, so, yeah. Next, we're going to say else if we grab our field of view. And we're going to say it's not equal to normal view. Then we're going to grab our field view again. And we're going to lerp it back. So we're going to grab our current field of view and we're going to change it to our normal view. And then, of course, our aim adjustment time. And, of course, we also change our time back to 1. Lastly is our camera collision check. And this is a base script, so you may want to change this up and fix it to your desired setup. But basically, how we have this is we have a vector tree called desired camera pose. So we're going to grab our transform dot parent dot transform to point. We're going to find the dolly dir, and we're going to multiply by max dis. Now keep in mind this is the normalized value of our current transform. So it's going to then multiply that value by our offset value. Next we're going to create a raycast hit and then we're going to call this line cast. So we're going to say if physics.linecast transform.parent.position then we're going to say desired camera pose out hit. Then we'll say z distance is equal to mathf.clamp hit distance. Then we're going to multiply that by 0 0.9. So we're going to subtract the value of our hit uh, by a point 0.9. So basically a point 0.1 of the hit distance, that's what we're going to be clamping it to. Then we're going to say it's equal to a min dist and max dist or offset value. 
otherwise our z distance is equal to our max distance. Of course we also have a vector 3 called new pose. This is going to be equal to a new vector 3 called offset of x, offset of y, and a negative of z distance. Then we'll say transform.local position is equal to a lerp value of our current position, so new pose, to dolly dir multiplied by z distance, and then we'll smooth it out uh, with our transition time. So just like that. Now I know that was a lot of information, um, but it's very simple once you actually start breaking it down. So we'll open up all those for you guys. Make sure all those are actually open. Okay, cool. Uh, so we're going to save that now. And we're going to head back over into Unity. We're going to press play one more time just so you guys can re-see how everything is. And here we are. As you can see, we can move around. We can run with our character just like we had inside the previous tutorial. If I look this way and aim, as you can see, our character turns. If I'm looking this way and I walk this way, as you can see, our character turns again. Uh, we have our character walking back and forth. Cool. And there is one other thing that I think we have to check on. Um, no, we did that in our last tutorial. Yeah. Alright, so just keep in mind, though, that you may want to adjust the collision script as well. Because it is a good script. As you can see, it is going to be clipping or basically zooming in. But there are some issues, as you can see right there. So just keep that in mind. Um, I'll be working on that myself to be able to uh, put it in my own game. But, you know, this works out pretty cool. So, yeah. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, check out some of my other videos. If you have a question, make sure to leave that inside the comment section below. If you also have an ideal or concept that you think would be really cool for me to put in a video, make sure to also leave that inside the comment section below. All right, I'll see you guys next time.